Hey everybody, Fuller here. Uh, welcome to part two of our sci-fi VFX audio design in Unreal Engine with Metasounds. In this video, we are gonna be just discussing briefly, uh, not too complicated, the score the um, underscore for this uh, little project. It's super simple, but I just wanted to kind of show you the basic concepts because I think it will be helpful, especially if you're new to Metasounds or, or music uh, arranging. I know a lot of composers that um, want to make music for video games uh, like to learn a little bit more about kind of how the music in video games works. Uh, because it's not always just as simple as making a track and throwing it in the game, but video game um, gives you a lot of options and capabilities to resequence, reprogram music in real time, make generative music, make procedural music and all that stuff. So I wanted to talk just real briefly, there are, in my opinion, three kinds of ways to program or kind of like arrange music in a, a video game format, sort of like a real time format. The first one is, the, and the most traditional is, uh, and I, let me open up, I'm just gonna open up Digital Performer here to kind of give you a visual example of what I'm talking about. Uh, this first way we're just gonna call linear. And this is just your standard, you produced a song, you produced a track, all the way from zero to the end of the track, kind of like a movie score, basically. You literally just scored a track or a cue, if you will, like TV sync music or something. You just made a cue and you popped it in the game. Maybe it loops, maybe it doesn't. And, and that would look like this. You, you know, you have the beginning of your song and it goes all the way till the end, till it's over, and then it loops back around. Uh, this is kind of like standard old school video games. Uh, a lot of mobile games do this. The problem with this is it gets extremely boring and extremely monotonous and extremely annoying. And most of the players who play these games turn the music off because it's just annoying. Nowadays though, any decent video game is gonna have uh, slightly more complicated versions. The second way, uh, then, then we got two, two other ways. So that's linear, then, then we also have vertical arranging and horizontal arranging. Uh, horizontal arranging is similar to linear, except you have more flexibility. So what horizontal arranging does is you break your song into sections, almost like arrangements, like intro, verse, chorus, bridge, you know. And so what you do with horizontal arranging is you can loop different sections, but based on gameplay, you can jump to the next section. So uh, that gives you some variety. So maybe section one is like super mellow, and then section two, maybe some enemies show up and you start you know, having a little bit of shenanigans. And then maybe you get to the boss level and then the, the music will skip to the third way and it's like super high energy. But again, all of these sections are kind of like pre-performed or pre-recorded. Maybe there's some transition points in between to make them smooth. But then maybe say this would have like kind of three parameters to your game. You would have like zero to 30, 31 to 60, and then 61 to 100 or something like that. And then those those different parameters would determine which part of the music plays, but it still kind of happened in a linear uh, fashion. And then the third way, which is the most flexible and probably the most interesting is vertical stacking. So with vertical arrangements, what you have is uh, you have the music playing, usually looping, but what happens is the composer, you or me, would write music, uh, multiple versions of the music. So maybe you write like a drum loop, but you do 10 of them and they're all slightly different. They're not all playing at the same time. One is playing, you know, at the same time. And then maybe you have some strings or something, but then you'll have different versions of one of those voices. So let's just say uh, this right here um, let's just say this track right here are the strings. And uh, what we have is we have this track looping over and over, and right now it's playing loop two, but then maybe a certain parameter will happen, and then loop two will silence, and loop two B will play. And loop two B maybe has a little more energy or a different riff. And then uh, all the while all this other music is staying the same. So you'll have different layers stacked like a doll basically, like you're producing music, literally like drums, bass, guitars, keys, all stacked together and you can mute them or change the volume. 
And what that does is that gives you a lot more flexibility because what happens, especially with Metasounds and Unreal 5, you can randomize a lot of this stuff. So it will randomly trigger things for you. And obviously with uh, just a few audio assets, it gives you the ability to create a lot more arrangements. Then of course, a combination of all of these is the most powerful way to program music. So we might have uh, section A here and then we might have another section uh, down this way that's uh, linear, you know, but it's looping this, it's playing different versions, and then it goes to this section and it's looping a different section, but again, it's using uh, vertical stacking as well. So all of these combinations can give you a lot of different options. So I just wanna kind of give a brief overview of that. So if you're a composer and you're new to the video game world, be thinking about that. Be thinking about all of these different ways that you can write uh, music so that then the programmers can take that and, and give basically give the game a lot more options so that it doesn't get boring, it doesn't get stale, but there's a lot of iterations, real time, iterations that are unpredictable, which really can lend itself to a great gameplay experience. So for this particular uh, sci-fi project, I chose uh, uh, basically the vertical stacking method, method and uh, we'll jump into the meta sound and I'll show, ex so show you kind of exactly what I did with it. If you look here in our editor, I have uh, two sounds. I have this sound, which is, let's clear this out, click on the sound over here. I got the ambience which is really just, um, let's go over here, ambience. It's just this. You can barely hear this. There you go. I'm cranking it up. Just a little bit of air. That's all. Um, you know, ambience is important. Otherwise, it kind of always sounds canned. So as soon as you start uh, this level, That ambience, real subtle. You gotta be careful with the ambiences. You don't want them to be too loud. Um, otherwise it just sounds like white noise, but there's a little ambience in there. And then also this meta sound here, which is our meta sound score. So let's look at that. Now the purpose of this was VFX, right? So the score wasn't that important, but I, n I hate to not have some music. So I built this score here. I'm gonna show you real quick how this works because it's kind of cool. Um, and it'll give you kind of like a basic idea of 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 how I how I built the simple score meta sound because I did want it to have the ability to play over and over and over and have randomization because you can sit here and you can listen to the score for an hour and it doesn't get too boring or too repetitive just by doing some cool slight uh, slight tricks I've got a layer here of a of a damage loop pretty basic I've got a drone. It happens, all this is happening at 93 beats per minute, which is really important. I have flute riffs. I made these uh, at 93 BPM. I have low strings. Okay, I've got my main mix here, which I don't use. I've got a music box. which is playing a bunch of random riffs, same key. I think it's C minor. I've got pads, which is the bread and butter holding it together, 93. Those are actually, it says 93, but they're they're not. They're asynchronous, they're, they're, they don't have a tempo. I've got another percussion bed here. And then I've got a riser, which is pretty sweet, that happens randomly. So, when you hit play, score starts playing and you can walk around this level for a long time and you know you're not going to really hear it repeat much but what you are going to hear is some randomization so let's look at that uh, let's look at the score so how did we hook up the score here's what we did on play when the meta sound plays we trigger this riser which is just the riser and that's just a cool way to kind of say, hey, we're starting. Cool intro. I like to give the music a little dramatic entrance. Nothing like a good dramatic entrance. I have a trigger repeat set here. And then this is repeating. If you see here, I'm repeating this riser every 16 bars. So every 16 bars, you get a new riser, which kind of gives it a little bit of transition and de definition. This is going to the mixer, coming in here, level one, right at the default one value. Then, 
Underneath that, I have a drum layer also happening on play. Now, you'll notice with the drum layer, I am triggering a delay. I'm triggering the delay out here for one beat. Why? Because I don't want that drum beat to start till after the riser is done, and the riser is one, one measure. Sorry, one beat, I said one beat, one measure. So you'll hear the riser, and then one measure, as soon as the riser hits the climax, you'll hear the, the beat start. So check this out. Boom, there it is. So now we have a drum beat playing, and you'll also see here that I have a trigger repeat that gets triggered. And this also repeats every 16 bars. Now, when I repeat this though, I'm going to get a new audio file from an array of audio files. And then that is going to play that audio file. If you look over here on the percussion array, I have two assets. I've got my damage loop and I've got my percussion. So this randomly gets one of those every 16 bars. And it's just a way to kind of keep it fresh and new. There's no real, it's just totally random. It gets one of those new ones, sends it over here to channel two, which is the drum volume. Then I have my third layer, which is a melody layer. This is pretty cool here. So same concept with the drums, but you'll see here, this actually gets delayed for 17 measures because I don't want this to start until after we've passed through the entire score one time. Then what happens is this triggers and it pulls an array from here. And if you see here, I've got a main mix array. I've got a music box array. I said I wasn't using this, but I am using this, I lied. I got a music box array. I've got the low strings array, and then I put a couple blank arrays in there just to give it a rest. Sometimes the best music is what you don't play. So we are, every 70, or every 16 bars, we are changing, you might hear a flute melody, you might hear string melody, but it's random. And then the percussion tracks are random. Then over here, my fourth layer is just a drone. Drones are cool because they add all sorts of tension and stuff. So I've got a drone going on top of the pads and that just starts and it just plays and it loops because it's smooth. So it loops and then our final layer is our pads layer, which starts here. We don't need any of this actually. It just starts here and it plays our pads. Similar to the drone, but a little less dissonant and tense. All this comes into the mixer and then it comes out here, and then I've got a score volume, again, just the master volume, so you can kind of adjust where you want that to do without having to go into mix classes and all this other stuff. You can just do it right here, and the meta sound gives you a nice foundation. Now you'll see here, this unfinished node, I put a little comment here, not used. You can get this out of here by going over here and deleting it, but I wanted you to see that we're not using unfinished because this meta sound plays continually throughout the whole um, project. So one thing you can do, if you want to see what audio is playing, you can go down here under command and you can go stat audio and then you'll see everything that's happening. You'll see here our active sounds. We have three active sounds. If I fire a weapon, it's going to go up. It's going to keep going up until those sounds get pulled out of memory and then it goes back down. You see active sounds. So we have two active sounds. Which active sounds? We have the score active and we have the um, ambient active. That's all we have active until footsteps, we activate those, those come and go, those are just one off, and then we fire weapons, we keep sounds, and then it pulls them back out of the memory. And so that's a good little trick to know. Uh, and if you wanna get rid of that, just go stat audio and it'll pull it off. That's a super, imp I mean, I should probably do a tutorial just on that one feature because that's super important to keep track of what kind of mess you're making if you're making a mess. Um, so anyways, that wraps up video one in this series of sci-fi weapons and audio designs in uh, Unreal Engine 5 with Metasounds. Hope this was helpful. Please like and subscribe, comment if you will. If you notice anything I did wrong, feel free to correct me. I'm not a genius by any stretch of the man of imagination, um, but hopefully this was helpful. In our next video, we're gonna talk about more of the sci-fi 
Fi, weapons and ammo pickups we'll see you in the next video.